Hello, um, thank you for joining us today in this uh, 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 discussion, conversation with Mrs. Renu Modi, who is, as many know, um, one of the most important gallerists in India. She's thrown over 300 artists over 30 years. And uh, today uh, we're in the fortunate position to be able to ask Renu some questions, give us some anecdotes and a little bit of history about why she set up the gallery and what it was that uh, took her to being in a position where she's now 30 plus years on um, and having shown all sorts of different works. It's a good time to do it because many of you will know that um, the show by Gallery Spass at Bikina House has opened to great acclaim and showing Makala Bal and Mekla Bal and Shoba Bruta, uh, works by um, these ab abstract works by these artists, which sits also neatly in with uh, a, um, an, a, an art form that um, Mrs. Um, Renu Modi is known for. You'll see on the screen, we're just running some of the names that have been shown over those 30, uh, 30 plus years. Um, you know, Jagath Virasinga, you can see there as well, Sri Lankan artist, as well as many uh, Pakistani artists. And um, Renu will talk briefly about um, showing Pakistani artists, even though they were very unfashionable back, at, back in the times. So um, also you'll see some names that are big names now, but weren't necessarily then like Mitu Sen. Um, Mona Rai, as everybody knows, is back in fashion, whose works were shown at various exhibitions in the last couple of years. And then um, I think this is a good point at which to ask Renu, why did you set up the gallery so that we can have some context for people who don't know the gallery? What inspired you? And then let's go through some of these uh, exhibitions. We've got some lovely images as well today of some of the exhibition openings and some of the shows. Unfortunately, we don't have an archive of every single show, which is a shame, but we have uh, Renu here who's able to bring those exhibitions to life for us. So Renu. Uh, we premiered the gallery in 1989, October. Uh, Hussein was my inspiration, who inspired me to open this space. Um, his friend Rashida Sibriki and he both said to me to open because he's designed my home and he was a friend of the family for since the 80s, I knew him. And um, <clears throat> once he designed the home and he said to me that, why don't you open a gallery? And that's how this whole uh, gallery came up. And he actually gave the name. He said, I've designed the logo. I'm going to give you my first show, and that was his autobiographical show, which actually I really didn't realize would set the pace of the gallery and uh, would make everybody sit up uh, in, the, in those years. And, and um, he actually looked around, it was very interesting. He went around the whole of Delhi looking for a space for me. He went to um, Hoskar's village where there was only two, you know, Bina Ramani and I think like Kakuta, the only two stores were there. And he found it very dusty and he said, no, I don't like that space. And my husband said, take, take my boardroom or take my space. And he took it. He said, okay, we'll do it in the West. We have small, small spaces. And, you know, and that's how uh, this pass came into existence. And I think within three years, I moved to a larger space. And then in 2008 or something, we opened up this three, we had three-tier gallery. Now it's like two, two floors we have here. And I think there was no looking back since I've opened my gallery. It's going step by step. We started uh, doing shows. So you, um, Renu, weren't, um, this was the late 80s, you weren't um, following fashion or what was fashionable at the time. You were actually creating what, looking back, was a, a part of an ecology that was creating certain trends, which we take for granted now. And uh, one of the things in particular that's interesting is that uh, actually the number of um, Pakistani artists that you had shown um, at a time where uh, Pakistani artists were are not necessarily being represented or exhibited um, in the Indian galleries, even though it was quite a small um, gallery uh, pool at the time? I think, you know, Jagdeep, basically, as I had mentioned to you earlier also, we've shown two art, Pakistani artists, but when I showed in 1993, that time there was no gallery showing. Um, Sanskriti, Mr. Opi Jain had called up and he, uh, and it was a solo show of Tala Rathor. She was 
working there in the residency and and um, in india there was really not much awareness of this uh, miniature department in the now school of in, in the now college of art and that's where um, she came from and uh, it was a beautiful show and it was a sell out show but uh, more important was that you know we we were setting up as far as was setting up a trend for for uh, to look beyond uh, beyond india that time and then again i had ali kazim later i think it was 2007 67 i think uh, yeah. we had uh, ali kazim in, in india which again was like a superb show and it but uh, i had a overwhelming response to it i we were approaching and going to be doing a few more pakistani artists but that time the kargin war happened and many more things happened so i really couldn't do and then other galleries took over about pakistani artists but then again i i will um, along with pakistani artists my uh, interest in southeast asia was always there so i think 2005 uh, 2014 i tied up with serendipity arts uh, foundation along with uh, sunil gunjal and we did this uh, and tirtha so there were like two non commercial uh, institution and one commercial that is me doing this wonderful project with uh, sri lanka so there were sri lankan artists and indian artists and it was very well documented in banaras we had gone and and um, and there it was well documented there was a film made and we showed the film in the, in the india art fair also if you remember so that's how my journey with pakistani artists and then sri lankan artists uh, have, have come and i have shown another uh, pakistani artist um, at the india art fair but then again problems and uh, logistical problems and we uh, his name was sadar sadar khureshi and it was again very great great response uh, to that artist we had We've also uh, previously Renu spoken about the fact that uh, you were showing video works uh different art, art in different formats uh, before before the 2000s you know over 20 years ago. Uh do you want to say a little bit about any particular show where um because you were on a learning curve as you didn't have a gallerist mentor or a museum mentor as it were to kind of take you through it was your passion and uh Yeah, you know, um, I think um, this Shobha Ji and Mekla's show both bring together some enduring life motifs the gallery has had, and as what you said, like such as many shows, like especially works on paper, is my was my passion and continues to be my passion to show works on paper, um, women artists, abstraction. That time, um, you know, it's. it's it was a passion it was a quest which continues within my within me within myself as really how what is there how do i show how do i excel within myself and um, you know i kept on moving and, and i think there were it was very instinctive also you know honed uh, instinct uh, my instincts honed by my conversations with artists you see i, I didn't have any uh, art history background but i think the experience what i have had and the knowledge which i gained i didn't open the gallery with any kind of a market in my mind but it was more out of i think love for arts and because of hussein inspired by hussein sir and with hussein i learned i used to have major converse, conversation maybe about the bengal school maybe by women artists were not uh, so shown so much so it was basically i would i would always keep on looking within myself the lacunae of indian art that time that what really is missing i used to see um, buyers buying more large canvases and i just felt that why aren't they why aren't they buying or collecting um, drawings mm. and that's how this drawing show came up and i just really felt that i needed a curator so that time curator was used as a very loose term who would select put up the show and i think that was the first curator a curated show in india when i asked uh, priyank shukla who was a friend also an art critic Uh, to do a drawing show, and you see this picture over there. And we had 80 artists from Gai Tonde to Subodh Gupta and, and Shambhavi. These two were the youngest ones when people didn't know about them, and they, and we showed them because uh, Prayagji knew them from Bihar, from Patna. They had just come, and um, it was shown at IFAX in both the both the spaces. You see Krishna Khanna behind, yes. and and um, I think Sanjeev Sena, and you see Siddharth and Yuriko and. 
so many of these artists uh, sitting behind. Um, that's and then uh, along with it, I understood the lacunae of uh, no publications happening that time. All what even now, what you see is all private uh, galleries who have really brought Indian art up. Now there is a public, and now there are museums and there are institutions that are helping. We still need more. And that's how this drawing came up. It was a curated show and whilst it is a kind of, um, it's my, uh, whenever I do large shows and after putting up the shows, I start thinking ahead of next, what we should, what shall we do? So during the drawing show, I realized that sculpture again is missing. So that's how all these medium based shows with material missing in, in, the, in the country came up. And along with it, we had major publications um, happening also, we published many important catalogs and catalog and book in a, in a book format. And I think they're very archival because most all these 80 artists have given their opinion about their statements on drawings. So you know, it's, it's a very very uh, historical record. Yes, historical record. And uh, along with it, we used to have bed hugs. Bed hugs that time we would call them bed hugs where on the mattress, which you see, there were drawing discussion. You know, discussion on drawings. I remember Swaminathan, uh, there was another picture, I don't know whether we have it here, um, but there was this uh, J. Swaminathan, he, he uh, conducted this whole workshop and there was a poetry recitation also, and all the younger artists, everybody participated in it. Similarly, with, so it was a very holistic approach to, the, to, the, to arts that time. And after that, during the drawing show, I said, Madhalal is a sculptor who came in from Banaras, and, was helping me put up the show and uh, the sculpture show came up. And that's how in 95, we took the whole of Lalit Kala, which was very unusual that Espas took this space and we had, I think around 21 artists, all under 45, which was my, my uh, uh, I, I, I said to the uh, curator, Madan Lal, that I need around artists, we should have some, all of them below 40, 45. And that's how Ravindra Reddy was, was shown, Sudarshan Shetty, Pushpamala, Rimsa, I mean, we had a, and along with it, some very unknown sculptors. And it was, you know, the scene that time was so casual with, um, Madam said to me, don't spend on me, don't give me F, just give me, you know, and he didn't take any, take any curatorial fee. There was, it was just a, with artists also, with galleries also, with, with all the audience also, all love for art. Mm -hmm. But, um, and so he went all around India talking to artists by train and gave him the train fare and, you know, he kind of, uh, and that's how we got Balsam Kohleri also was in that show. There were some amazing artists in that show. And uh, the whole of Lalit Kala was taken by, was uh, rented and it, we did that show there. Again, along with it, we had this publication, Sculpture 95. And we had a number of, uh, I think, two music performances and one or two uh, discussions on sculpture on installation because there was one one football which Soman had placed just there and I still remember it was so funny that um, there was a few collectors who came a few buyers who came to buy sculpture and they saw this football and they were wondering what it is because they were they were all very confused that can a sculpture be like this so it was very educative too and it has taken us and as far as I can proudly say that we have been very instrumental in um, creating collectors or guiding them or directing them or initiating them into buying, collecting sculptures and drawings. I spoke to them and I, I feel very strongly that a good collection is when you have a very uh, holistic uh, collection of, of maybe uh, paintings, drawings, sculptures, you know, put together. Now, photography, photography wasn't there and now photography has become. So it's like, it's, it's a 360 degree, um, change which you see now, a shift and um, a very beautiful shift. Okay, and tell me um, that um, with, um, uh, you know, you talk about these shows, uh, group shows with a number of artists and, uh, you know, how have, you, you know, even back then, how are you keeping the roster dynamic? Because there were so few galleries as well, so few opportunities to sort of, you're working through quite a few artists, giving as many as opportunities as you can. So how are you, how are you managing to do that? Because sometimes you have to be quite brutal to, because you can't look after or constantly be nurturing the careers of every single artist. Um, 
You are absolutely right because that has always been been. A, I think that this concern of being dynamic, of you know, keeping yourself uh, relevant or keeping up to good times, is uh, what we have always looked at, and I have been very conscious of aware of and very very aware of it. You know, I really th think that um, artistic practice and a gallery practice, a, a gallery practice or a or a gallery being being uh, dynamic or being there with the times. One has to continuously strive, and we have, we have. It's a constant endeavor to to be dynamic. My whole uh, to be dynamic. It's been my conversation, my intimate conversations with artists, with with contemporary artists, with curators. Like you know, when I I I talk to you about Indian aesthetics, how I got to know is, and those Indian aesthetics are still are still with me, yeah. and also doing. Staying with the times, looking at artists who are around, like I remember Kamat Manjunan Kamat, he had come to me and, you know, doing experimental work too, experimental projects. Manjunan Kamat had come to me and said to me that I want to draw on the walls and I want to make your, your whole gallery as my studio for a week. And I didn't even blink an eye, I said, sure. And that's how this whole wonderful project came up. Chitra Ganesh came and said, she wants to do two walls in, in my, and paint here. And, and work here and create works within the gallery space. And I, I had Kalam Patwa, who's again a um, uh, part painter. And I had, during, I think, one of the India Art Fair editions, during one of the India Art Fair editions, I had him uh, set up his workshop here in the gallery to do, and I had his show also here. Mm -hmm. So the gallery is constantly doing shows, which I, I think that we think that it is it is going to uh, help the gallery to, you know, and creating awareness, knowledge has always been in our, uh, as, as, as our focus. And the advantage with Espace is that we are there in a commercial space. So when you're in a public space, you have walk-ins and it is also with the close proximity with Jamia. So the students of Jamia come, so I'm, I feel very happy that I'm educating them or they see art and so many students have come up and thanked us to be year and you know they keep coming here. In fact, during the pandemic pandemic it was all you know all nobody came and the gallery had become very, very quiet. So like uh, Johnny ML had come and said to me, I I felt 2008, 9, we had it, I think 9, 10, we had an 11, 8, 9, and then 11, 12. We had two editions of video Wednesdays. And we were standing at the op at one uh, opening and in my gallery. And uh, Johnny said to me, I was asking him, I said, now I think we need to do some more, another medium. And she, he said, what about videos? And videos, we have, all galleries were showing, but nobody showed consistently. And again, in a, in a minute, I said, in a second, actually, I said to him, Johnny, go ahead. You can curate the video Wednesdays. And that's how it was a year long pro uh, project. And uh, we used to get a lot of uh, mails from foreign students or foreign research scholars and I, so two, two of them on, in two editions coming and, you know, researching as what we were doing because they said we do not have a list of Indian artists doing videos. And it was actually, it was a very um, interesting project. And then again, I wanted to continue. So 11, 12, I had Gaitri Sinha curate the second edition along with Chinese artists, Chinese video artists because Gaitri wanted to get. So, so that, this is how we, kind of bring our roster of, uh, of of shows, of keeping the galleries so alive. And we continue doing so. We've had a number of public projects also. Uh, I mean, public performances also the gallery has, has done. Once we did with this, Kamath finished his project and we had his, uh, you know, the whole project was uh, streamed, live streamed and recorded. And we had that video outside. But the many people were very intimidated to, this is a video Wednesday, which uh, is being shown when they used to come and look at videos. Yeah. This monitor was upstairs. Yes. And uh, uh, coming back to Kamath's, it was, and the whole t whole video was shown outside and there was a huge crowd, you know, people were very intimidated to come inside because we were having a party in the, in the gallery. Uh, we had Han Bing, a Chinese artist. He, he did a public performance outside my gallery. That again, and then we worked with Koj also for the event. Puja had a performance festival with the Swiss with the Swiss group who uh, who uh, performed outside in this commercial space. And there were at least 
must be three to four hundred following them and watching them. So this, and then I had Namji Patel's works, um, sculptures. So we, I've had some performances, and I, Namji's works were very big and couldn't be got into the gallery. So I showed them outside in the public space, outside my gallery. We had to take special public. Like, this was one of the installation, but this was inside the gallery. But there were much larger ones, which are like uh, very large public ones. And Vishal Dhar had uh, Rubina had done, done written the catalog, the book, and Vishal had uh, designed the whole show. So it was also outside again a lot of interest and in normal regular people looking at the sculptures. So that with the gallery's interaction with the public has been there and is there. So that's how my roster. Uh, obviously, the the private galleries, commercial galleries, were taking the space or the gap left uh, because of the lack of public institutions um, being able to create these kind of shows, experiences for uh, audiences. Before we uh, talk a little bit more about acting as an institution and also about your first foray overseas, I um, I just uh, wanted to talk to you about um, the uh, uh, somebody who's been a big influence on you, always there through Hussein was there at the beginning of the journey, and then Bawa, who had certainly you were collaborating for uh, quite a few years and uh, he certainly from conversations we've had before he certainly had a great deal of influence or insp provided inspiration for you do you want to talk about a couple of the shows that you did with Bawa? Manjeet was like a brother a mentor to me and he was also my advisor many many times this was a show which we had at Ranukkala Academy um, Manjeet had I had a very special relationship with Manjeet and he actually used to suggest uh, younger artists to me, like, you know, he had, when Sonia Purana had come here to do Delhi and he said, well, Lurki, I go and see her work. Or Subodh Gupta had come from Bihar and actually he's the one who prompted me, prompted me and gave me his address and told Subodh I'm coming to see his work, that he, I went to see his works, Subodh's works. And it, there was no pressure by Manjeet to, 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 to suggest that I should show the work, show the artist. But invariably, I used to. So, um, but uh, Sonia became a good, very uh, became a good friend. But uh, so both, I, I worked with him uh, in, in his initial years, five to seven years. We, I think five to six years we worked together. It was all because of Manjeet, and you know, Manjeet was a. Um, I would bounce off with him because I think I used to go to him once a week, or maybe every alternate or two three days. I used to be in his studio watching him paint. And with him, I used to talk. I mean, even Hussein also, I spoke to him about so many other of movements that happened post-independence, you know, and the progressives were growing. But with Manjeet, it was something of a, a like, uh, you know, when you talk of lines or you talk, Manjeet would always tell, because he would wake up early in the morning and I would ask him, what do you do in the morning at 4.30 in the morning? And he would say, I look at, I sit and I look at the cows with the crows perched on the on their heads, and I said, "Oh, no wonder that you know that it, it comes in your work." And he would always tell me in Hindi, "As this is my riyas, and this is an, oh, this is what an artist should do. This is a work which he did uh, in in my gallery once." So, um, and he actually we had a property, and he had designed designed a boundary also uh, with metal. Manjita done. So I used to watch him, talk to him, and he would talk about lines, and he would talk about the round, uh, rounded lines, and Hussein told me, uh, Hussein would, would, you know, he would just draw and say this, when I had no gallery, that was just a, his, uh, his friend, and he would always draw a line and say, look at the power of the line. And um, through, with Manjit, I used to talk about composition, about, about uh, application, about how to look at, you know, it was just a, just very informal conversation which I had with Manjit. And um, he would come and, uh, you know, sometimes sing also, with, uh, sing in my house sometimes, with, I mean, very casually with, with me, with the kids, with my children sitting around. Or, so that was a kind of a relationship I, I, I had with him. Very, very informal relationship, very close relationship. And many statements of these artists actually honed my instincts. And, you know, it was something with which, which I, when I look back now, there were seeds which were sown into me and they germinated at some point or the other, like my love for sculptures again, which I keep on showing and 
I love sculpture, the three-dimensional form has come from Hussein when he was designing my house, the light, the, the, the light form. Like I remember once, and even this big large show which I organize, I remember when he had finished my, my house and Hussein said to me, I asked him, why do you come and sit here for hours in the house? And he said to me that I want to, I know the house will be finished, it will look very beautiful. I love the process than the end. Mm. And that, that actually stuck in my head or in my heart. Mm. So even now, like putting up Mekla show, the Shobhaji show, organizing it was something which I thoroughly enjoyed the whole process. And the process is, I think that process also, there's so many uh, layers in my selecting artists or doing shows, because I, I find that these processes of creation of the artistic the process of artistic creation, that is what interests me and that is what makes me select artists. And that is what I, that kind of, and my conversations with Zarina, which I cannot but, but talk about, but again, she inspired me. She spoke so much about, about her minimalism or about her art or how she looks at art or she looks at relationships. So, so my, I think relationships with artists and looking at the very unexplored uh, mediums or artists like Jairam Patel or, or Himmat Shah or, you know, these were uh, Nagji Patel. Like Nagji Patel was the, I think mine was the OB the, at his past. That was the only solo he did, Nagji, Nagji Bhai. And then again, a penchant to, for good uh, productions and to have very serious writers writing, writing on them was another, another, uh, focus of, of, of ours. That's what we are doing and have done. Like we had this Kich Kich Hota Hai show by, curated by another very uh, special show, the, showing the popular imagery of that. And we had uh, the, the Self and the World uh, a Women Artist Show at the NGM. Again, we, I was working with institutions in the 90s. Like I worked with British Council in four cities when I had the mini print show. And we had a discussion on prints because prints were not moving, prints were not selling. So I think we had 50 artists and Anupam Sood curated the show. That's when I saw Zarina's work and that's when they came in so beautifully packed, very her style, you know, very zen-like. And when and I saw the packing, I said, whoa, what beautiful packing. And when we opened it up, I just fell in love with the work and fell in love with the artist I didn't know already, I never met. So, you know, working with British Council then working with the NGMA, in 97, Gaitri Sina first time curated, I approached Gaitri and she curated this self and the world. I was looking for subjects, for mediums, because when I read, when I saw Gaitri's book, Expressions and Evocations of Women Artists of India, is that when I said, let's do a show based on this book. And that's how the self and the world came, where from Amrita Shedgin works were taken from NGMA, oh. from their collection. That, and, so many of my shows were not commercial, most many, many shows, and I knew it. I didn't know who would buy drawings, I didn't know who would buy sculptures. Mm -hmm. So that's how Vispas continued um, and we continued working. And again, every show was a challenge for me. Every show as how to improve it further was again, a, like a, uh, and this, these two shows which we have put up now from, from, for me, for us, it's this after pandemic to show two large scale, you know, two solo at such a large scale. And again, Shobhaji, when I saw Shobhaji show uh, works, I knew her since the last 30 years. I just want to talk about this solo show is that um, I just realized that how quietly she has been working and really people have not really shown her, shown her in the way, in the light which she should be shown. So as far as took the baton to really put her and show her and we hope we are successful and even make her coming from a different generation. Again, both of them are very, very, they're beyond that ephemeral conceptual work, which many people have done. So, so you know, there's a certain um, synergy which work between the two artists and that's how these two solos have come up. Yeah. Um it's interesting because obviously, even in the late 80s, early 90s, um, you were putting on these quite challenging um, uh, shows, quite large scale um, and, and difficult, even these kind of things to do currently, let alone uh, such time ago. But you also uh, wanted to challenge yourself, I think, because uh, tell us a little bit about your 
uh, foray outside of India um, when you decided to do something in Dubai in the early 90s? You know, again, I thought that Indian art is not being shown that side and I don't put it in 89, but I think so many conversations, serious conversations with artists and with curators and uh, writers and critics made me uh, think of showing outside. So this friend of mine um, uh, who has no art background, she said, I'll do this show for you. I know I had no idea and I didn't know people there. And we got the Emirates Bank sponsored, the show sponsored Hussein coming in. The condition was that Hussein has to be there, present, and his works need to be there. So Hussein uh, was, came to Dubai and it was quite an experience to, I knew him very well. So he, he, he came there and he painted there. Um, and uh, it was a quite a nice show we had. We, I took Ram Kumar Vishwanath and Manjit Bawa. And so what was the youngest who I took. And I remember a sheikh came with his wife Jogan, whose so both work was the first one which he came. He just marched up to the painting and said, I want this. And that is how that painting went. But um, it, it was quite a big thing. And after that, um, I don't remember the year, but in two, I, mean, I, I had two more shows in Dubai. And that time Dubai really didn't have, I think Malini had her sh uh, gallery. I'm not very sure that time. Well, she used to organize art camps there. Mm. I think she opened later. And um, then one show was a very interesting show, which I took to Dubai that was called Faces. One was just a group show. And this was one where I took Bhupin Khakar and um, Ranveer Kalika, Amit Ambala and Manu Parikh. Physically, we invited them in this show because their works were there. And Bhupin had done that time uh, a very large canvas. And um, it, was a, it was a face. And I remember... We had put it up and next morning, my the girl who was looking, managing that uh, exhibition, early morning, they called me up and said, oh, one painting has fallen. And when I came, it was a very large one. And I see this uh, Bhupin's work, the canvas on the floor, and you won't believe my heart sank. I said, I hope it is not, uh, it is not damaged. And I, because I called up uh, Bhupin and he said, no, I mean, he was quite cool about it. He said, no, no, nothing will happen. Just, you just go, you just stay calm. But nothing happened to it. But um, all these four artists were there. And it was, it was some, such, ex, such a great experience with them. There were many, many over there, which I really can't share now, right now. But uh, it was some experience. They were there for three, four days. And there was great interviews of theirs. And people really liked. And people loved Ranveer's work. That, that uh, so interesting. Because Ranveer had made him, I, the whole show was on faces, on heads, and Ranveer had made heads, small ones, and they were like jewels. So it was, it was um, quite an. I remember Bhupe went off for for shopping, and the press was looking for him, and we wouldn't come back, and he had a <laughs> long list of, list of uh, shopping to do. And I actually got upset with him. I said, "You were here for three days, and just stay here for the in the exhibition." <laughs> Takes me on to um, tell us um, also about uh, the student show with the Jogan Chowdhury. Um, uh, yeah, that, Jogan asked me to do 2006. That he said, "Why don't you do my students' show?" Yeah. Because at that time, I think me too had already passed out. Um, there were I don't really remember. There must be 20 artists at the Lithgow Academy, mm -hmm. and. Showing younger artists has always, always like this particular one, which you see that was there's some Sarkar, I think he was doing theater back, backdrops and you see Jogan in the background. Uh -huh. And I think this was the uh, French ambassador who we had invited to come and open the show. And this whole uh, show was just his students and um, really went off, was taken very well. Again, it, it happened not because Jogin had asked me uh, because I was just wanting to show, I've always shown younger artists and unexplored artists. And that's how this Jogin's uh, show, show came up. And Moe Samant was also there. It was, it was a very interesting show, but not much talked about or uh, not, seen, not seen, but uh, it had a great attention and some overwhelming uh, response to, to this show. It's great to see that some names, a number of names from that show are very successful or very well known or have great public audiences now. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, we've talked in the past about, uh, you know, about the production or the creation of art or people collaborating. And I know that um, in the time that I've known you for four or five years now, that um, that you, you put your mind to something, you do your own thing, you have that level of independence about you. And I know that you were, there was a time when artist camps were incredibly popular, but um, you didn't want to go quite down that route. Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, how, how, you know, how you and the gallery worked around that while you were uh, sort of opposed to artist camps? <laughs> it's very interesting. It was, it would, as I said to you, I would take up challenges. And it, I think I generally, um, it wasn't on purpose about uh, following the, being a rat in the rat race, I would say that. But like, when I, I don't, really want too much of validation if I'm convinced within myself about that art or about that artist or about a particular medium, I do go ahead irrespective of whether I'll sell or not sell. But the, the uh, most important, and these camps, what you're mentioning, and those years, those group shows also were happening and the, one would see the same names. I really want, I did want to do a group show, but I didn't want to go that same same, same road or same same way to what other galleries or about other people were doing. So I asked uh, Bhupen Khakar. Um, I did this interaction between Bhupen Khakar, Amit Ambalal, Atul Dodia, and Anju Dodia. Uh, I spoke to them and I said I want I wanted to do a group show of yours, but I don't want it this way. Could we have an interaction and all your interactions? of the, the outcome or your the responses to a particular city, to a particular town. And I, actually I suggested Haridwar because there was a connection. Bhopin had done a huge drawing for one, I think it was an Indo French show, for one show at NGMA, which was very, very large. And I told him, you can, and it was on Haridwar. So that stuck in my mind. And I said, we have a house there in Haridwar. Why don't you all come there, we we'll interact. And in the camps that time, the trend in India was to give them, give artists, um, it was like a, it was like a give and take you, you, we'll take you there and you give us works. That is really not what I wanted. And I, um, and I said to them that I'm not going to give you any paints or brushes or canvases or anything of that kind. We'll just go talk about the art practice, discuss the art, again, again, my interest in knowledge of, of knowing um, aesthetically as really what is what we should do, what's happening. So we all, they all love the idea and we all went to Haridwar for a week in, in our house there. And um, the most wonderful time and uh, after a year, they produced works and we showed and this whole show is called Leda. And it's a very, again, a show which, you know, like when the, the Twin Towers fell, 9-11 happened. And I remember we, all of us huddling in, in our in that house, it was since it's in our old days, there was no television. So in my house manager's room, there was a small TV, black and white, and uh, we all were huddled, all of us. All you see in this picture, we were all huddled in that room, and we were watching the Twin Towers fall. And that particular TV and that scene was captured by Atul in one of his canvases. And Navdeh Joy, who you see in this picture, he was he used to teach us yoga in the morning. So, you know, we all used to do yoga, except in Bhupen. And uh, Atul has this one yoga asana and this, uh, you know, these twin towers falling, a beautiful work, which was sold later. And it was there in the exhibition. And um, we used to, they, we used to roam around in the daytime. And in the evening, there used to be very serious discussions over drinks about uh, what was happening about, what was happening around that time, installations of, was uh, a lot of artists were doing installations so on the installation practice on many other other issues which we spoke and teased Bhupen also. And Bhupen every morning they were the first one to take his sketchbook and pen and go to all the ghats and he used to keep drawing, keep drawing, keep drawing. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the, uh, the outcome of this whole show was absolutely, uh, it was a memorable show, a memorable experience. And this catalog also is very archival where we do not have more of it. There was one article, one page uh, written by Bhopin himself. Because, you know, this also had a story which people really didn't know. I mean, Atul was being mischievous and, and we, laugh, we still laugh about it. Um, I was just getting a little irritated with Bhopin demanding that there should be liquor every evening. 
and my my in the house my boy came and asked what to keep and i said keep anything and get kept some like country liquor and uh, atul stood with the country liquor bottle on at the door and said to bhupen bhupen this whiskey would do and bhupen just hit the roof and i sent the car to rudki because there were no drinks available in hyderabad so i sent the car to rudki and then and then bhupen just got pacified so these memories and these anecdotes which um, and you know in the evening bhupe used to sing and uh, and he had done two i remember he had done two accordion books which i showed in the gallery when i was doing a group show of not leela but later we did some paperwork show and bhupe rang me up and said why don't you buy those two books because those two books um, are done on in that on the haridwar trip on your modi bhavan but uh, some very important collector bought those books and they are still with him Yeah. I mean G- Gallery of Spas and you have played a, a key role in the arts ecology over the last 30 years and you continue to do so and obviously a part of that is um uh, the art fairs and India Art Fair um tell us a little bit before India Art Fair and then uh, your experience of the early editions um that time it was called uh, Delhi India Art Summit um you know in the 90s again when I'm, i keep on repeating about this whole uh, reflecting of looking at lacune like, i knew indian art was coming up but i was also aware of the fact that you know people were intimidated coming into the into the white queue mm-hmm. so i i had approached the uh, pragati medan chairman that time who i knew in the late 90s i said why don't we do an art fair i myself wanted to do an art fair start an art fair i said you know and not just for For, for the whole of india and i we had invited a few galleries also a few came apara sharan apara came rakhi sarkar had come three four of them and i don't remember the other then we want i want we wanted to to do it because i said said the public would we need to if the public is not coming in we need we need to reach out to them and get the common man inside this uh, space where they are very intimidated and since i used to we used to i used to travel so much international and uh, i would see these big hoardings and these posters and i i said to the chairman that let's start from the airport so i i did have a vision for the art fairs but then um, when neha came in the 2000 when was the first edition eight nine something she came you would know better nine or 10 she came to me neha neha ke paas i think i was I, i was the first gallery she approached and she came to me with this suggestion of starting and fair and i was just completely i didn't even take again a second i said yes neha i'm with you start the art fair it's my dream coming through you and that's how the india art fair started we did the first summit was the so first edition was done at the pragati medan in a very small way but i think she created a wonderful property and i think at this india art fair now and i think an art fair is a, is a very important um part of an art ecology of a maturing art ecology uh, art economy in a country mm. you know art fairs and uh, biennales and so all this was happening and the indian art market was was maturing so it's it's a very natural thing uh, natural uh, process yes one of the most satisfying things certainly for me when i was running india art fair was that so many people were buying works of less known artists okay. and that's why it was very important to bring through as well as the safe bets of the well known names but also to be bringing through these artists and displaying them in this way and also the attraction you know attracting international uh, attention to the art and the artworks um so tell me where sort of now um the, the next indian art fair is in february february 22 third to the 6th of uh february um which you'll be participating again um with the last 18 months uh this period that we're still going through in the post pandemic um you know you've had very challenging times through uh, through the th- three decades how um uh how are you thinking now i mean for me the bruta and the bala bal show at bikan house is a sign of you taking the art you've got your premises in delhi which are very popular but you're taking it and you're putting it into these bigger spaces or spaces that might be accessible to people who would not necessarily find um think about going to see art but might go to that venue um 
is there is there a, uh, what are you planning post this Beacon House show? Are you going to be continuing, obviously, with what you do in India, but are you going to be looking internationally again at some point? I think the greatest shame right now is that it's not possible, really, for as many international people to see the artists. And that is important because it does allow Indian artists to and uh, South Asian artists to get residencies, to get scholarships, to get funding for their work, um, but also to be in institutions outside of India, given that we don't have those kind of public museum or the scale of public museums that we have uh, that, that are in the rest of the world. So f- for you, is it quite instinctive what occurs to you during a certain time is what you'll end up doing. Well, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, or have you already, you know, uh, you don't strike me uh, as a pen and paper person who writes a plan. It comes in here and then you pick up the phone and get on with it. That's what I do. Um, you know, Jagdeep, I think this, uh, what you said about pandemic, I think now we are all living in this age of virtual reality. You all have to live. I also finally had to accept it. Because I do think I don't come from that generation, but now virtual reality is what we have. We have already have. We've revamped our website and uh, it's already doing well. And uh, the online viewing room is alive, which other, other my colleagues all over India or all over the world, they're we having on, on OVRs. Um, um, I think I didn't deter. I, we are going to the Abu Dhabi Fair when you talk of international, because we've had, my artists have got great response there in, in, that, in that region. Also, there is a show which I think I, you must be aware of. There is one show which is going to two, three museums in, the, in Italy, Torino in October or in November, in November, I think. The show is starting. I think they're in November. And there's this artistima there also. We are showing a few of our artists. So that is the, the one Basel, we are at Basel March, we are not going, but we're thinking whether we'll go or not, depending upon the COVID situation. So uh, right now, internationally, we can't do much since, as you said, logistically, I think it's a little difficult for us to go and the quarantine and this and that, it's, it's a little difficult. We'll see how it goes and how uh, how we proceed. And I really feel when we talk about artists, if we, if each gallery has its own um, set of artists who we all would fit into different countries, different types of which you are very well aware of. Mm-hmm. That is what is, uh, that I keep in mind as really which where, where which artists of mine would fit in. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a very important point, actually, different audiences um, for different types of art and artworks. So can I um, ask you a final question, uh, which is really, I know this is very, very difficult to pick out one um, because you've done just so many shows and so many activities. But can you think of uh, any, is there one particular show that still sits, you know, in your heart, as it were, as being the one that you, when you reflect, you actually think that show meant a lot to me or it was something special for you? I know every show means a lot to you and I know how hard you work around that. But going back, particularly maybe to the early days, is there anything that stands out to you when you thought, yep, I'm a gallerist now, I really am a gallery? I, I think the first show that um, uh, in the in the initial stages I'm talking to you about, which still stay in my heart, I actually all large show, but more the sculpture show. I remember uh, even now is that when everybody had gone, there was nobody around, and I uh, not even the curator, and I at Lalit Kala on all the two floors, I was walk, just walking by myself, and there was tears in my eyes, and that show is so dear to me. Because, uh, you know, I could never ever imagine that we could put up such a show. And that is when I realized, when I, when uh, very senior people like O.P. Chen or um, Jyotindra Chen, I mean, to say all these people, or the NGM director who wanted to, or Satish Kuchar, they were all there and they were all kind of hugging me and saying that this should have been a museum show. A museum would have the guts, but here you have the guts too show such art because really to be honest I really didn't know who would buy Pushpa Mala's Kharao installation or who would buy a Rimson bed that hospital bed which he had put up. But I really wasn't bothered. I was more I was more concerned about showing the right kind and Sudarshan Shetty showed for the first time in that in, a, in the group 
group show. So he had these two large, which was I think which were acquired, not I think acquired by the NGMA. So um, so that that show still le- leaves me with great satisfaction of what I uh, Ravinder Reddy has uh, said to me, and he is also said in a video it was recorded also that. If we had not shown his works that time, he would have stopped sculpting. Yeah. So, because his sculptures were not selling that time. Mm-hmm. And it's 60 degrees because we you know when people were coming to look for mother and child, for mother and child coming now to see them buying old of sculptures and installations, maybe the younger people who are buying. But now, you know, sculpture is coming to a to a yeah. to, its, to its what it, it deserves. So that has been a very satisfying experience. Again, the self and the world the women artist show, though it, it went into a lot of controversy because of the gender factor. People were saying, why are we dividing? Why are we, di- with this, with this, I think it, this subject can go on and on and on. And it is going to be argued by artists and I so agree with them. But again, it was such a satisfying thing to do with a uh, satisfying project to do with the National Gallery of Modern Art and to take Amrita Shadyal and their other, other artists also we had followed and Put up and to show Latika Kat's fantastic sculpture right in the beginning. Again, a very satisfying um, exhibition for me. And I think working with Zarina has been a very, very satisfying, with Nilima Sheikh, I mean, a very, very, uh, a show which I'll always love, which we showed here, um, the drawing trains here in, 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 uh, in the gallery. Again, so beautifully done by her. A Mirali Mukherjee show also, which we did of bronzes. So all these kind of shows, uh, Namji Patel, I'll never ever forget that Namji Patel. Yes. And amongst, the, among, amongst the contemporaries, I have so many that, you know, it's like... Uh, yeah, like it must be. so difficult for me to say, but yes, the, uh, these shows really have... Um, okay. That's from my heart. What a nice thing you asked me. <laughs> well, I'm really hoping, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that... Uh, I know that you're um, uh, creating a, uh, as best you can... A, digital archival record of the gallery's history and it's always easy to look back and say I should have taken images I should have done this but when you're in the midst of it and you're practically trying to do it and I think we'll all um it'll I'm sure everybody would look forward to that I, for now it would be great if you could just tell people briefly about the two Instagram lives that will be um about conversations with the current artists that are showing at uh, Beaconer House so those are coming up in the next couple of days with Ranjit Hoskot and yeah. One, yeah, one, one is going to be with, on the 9th with uh, Ranjit Hoskote and between Shobha Bhutta and Ranjit Hoskote. He's going to be talking about her exploration of, of thread. And, uh, and actually we have shown two decades of her works in the gallery uh, at, at, at the Kanir House. So he's going to talk about that and take the audience through, through, through her journey. And the second one is going to be between Mekla Behel and Bharti Chaturvedi. That's going to be in the tents. Bharti right now is living in Canada. So uh, it's about, again, the art practice of both these artists. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to talk differently and separately. So two different days. And right. I must say that we are getting some great audience. Uh, I'm surprised in spite of the COVID, uh, still, it's still there it's in the, uh, behind our, in, in our minds. But uh, people are coming to see the show. And that's the advantage of showing uh, publicly also some once in a while. Yes. Now, I've watched the online uh, walkthrough. It's fantastic. And it's also always fantastic to have the artists there and speaking and talking about the work and the history, particularly very modest artists as well. All right. Well, thank you for everybody who's joined us. Um, and thank you to you, Renu. And... Um, I look forward to seeing you when I'm back in India, if not before then, and to seeing everybody else. And uh, it's uh, this this Bickner House show is the one that I'm most regretting, you know, most wishing I was there. Um, and because as we know, looking online and looking in real life um, are two different things. But I have to say that it's it, the shows in India are presenting really well. All the galleries are doing them, and it's a really good way to keep in touch with people who can't otherwise be there. So yeah, all right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. My talk to me to dig into my past. Yep. Look forward to talking more. Take care. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye everyone.